I did not tape um, removing the steering rack. Probably should have. Um, I did not remove. The first instruction that says is to remove the radiator and the fan. You do not need to do that to get the rack out. However, the reason they ha you have you doing that is because that's how you get the compression tool is to compress the bushings later on evenly. I used some vice grips. It got pretty good. But um, I have a cooling project coming up, so I, I didn't want to mess with this. So I left the radiator and fan installed. I jacked the car up. I um, got a hold of the tie rod ends, um, undid the nut at the bottom. I attached this um, over it and tightened it up until it snapped loose. It's a tapered end. You can do not beat it with a hammer. Just borrow one of these. You can get them at the tool stores for free as a part rental. Um, anyways, um, do that on both sides with the car jacked up and the wheels off. And then undo the four bolts for the clamps that are right there. Undo the four bolts. You can remove the clamps and the brackets from above right here. Um, then the last thing I did is I removed my alternator and then I removed the top bolt on the universal joint. And then I smacked the joint with a hammer and a crowbar until the, the rust broke free. Then that was it. And then you slide the rack out through the driver's side wheel. Just pull it slowly. If you have an assistant, make might be a little bit easier, but it just slide right out and you're done. It takes about you can probably have the rack out in less than 10 minutes. So after you get the uh, circlip out, you'll notice this thing is really stuck it, and it's difficult to get out and you don't know what to do because you can't, because this is not a plug at the bottom. So don't try and punch it out from the bottom, leave that alone. Um, and you don't want to mess up the splines. So how do you gently get this thing out? Because once you've removed all this stuff, it should just come right out. So you just, you just got to get it broken loose. Um, I squirted some TB blaster down here. And then the next step is just find some washers from your junk drawer, any size, just pile them on, pile them on until they get to about the height of that, because um, you do have a skinny spot in the middle, which is nice, right there. Pile it on, then you got to get it in your vise. Once you got it secure in your vise, um, I'm using my skinny wrench, which I do recommend everybody get because they come in very handy. They're not very strong, but uh, you see how it's skinny? So you need something to get in there like that, see? And you tighten it down. And now you can pry on it, tap it with a hammer a little bit. Oh, look at that. Moving on out. So you can only move it so far with all the washers in place, but um, they'll break loose and it's easy to pull out then. All right, what I've simply done is I've put this back on here and I just wiggled and pulled and wiggled and pulled. And then this little locating thing is gonna go flying out. Do not lose it. It goes in that little slot up front there. So I'm gonna put that in a little baggie. Should be able to get this out. Anyways, it's getting looser. 
another part right here. Looks like there's some more shims, shims in there. A little magnet here. Yeah, there are some more shims in there. Interesting. goes wiggle and jiggle there she goes all right now you can get the rack out for me i had uh one shim was stuck to this thing so i had uh two two shims in there and then this bushing thing can come out that part here pretty cool The rack only goes out one way, as I recall. Now you can slide it out and get it cleaned up. Then you've got some stuff down there. And you gotta make your magnet. I think that's what the bottom of the bottom of the pinion sits in right there. So that's at the bottom. Clean up time. It's an example of be painting this uh, steering rod in place. Propped it up in a little pipe. Spun it three six. Just taped it all up. Uh, so what I use, if you don't have access to powder coating for all products that are steel, is um, after I degrease it and wire brush it, I convert any surface rust, and then I encapsulate it. Then either a satin or a semi-gloss, extreme chassis black, or or PR fifteen, but uh, this is a uh, good stuff too. Here are these pieces. Here, it's all doing well. Here's the rack, getting its first coat now. Some people paint this part silver because this is aluminum, this is steel. But I'm gonna make it all black. Products I'm not gonna paint. I'm gonna clean up. Um, I'm not gonna paint paint the cap, but I'm gonna just coat it. Uh, two brackets and the new tie rods. Uh, again, I'm gonna use my uh, and it, because they're not exposed to engine heat. I'm gonna use the Protecto Clear for clear coats because it works really well, and it'll give uh, it'll keep the rust from forming on on these these things. All right. So I'm jumping around a bit because I didn't originally plan on videoing this process, but I had so many questions. I might as well just document what I'm doing to help some people out. So I just wanted to restore the steering rack. It wasn't broken, but it certainly needed attention. And now I'm in the cleaning up stage. Um, and these are the parts that I decided to buy. All right. So I bought new tie rod ends and I clear coated them. So these are good to go. And I counted, uh, how many times this unscrewed to go back on and they go back on to these things i found these to be in good shape um when you get these out you're gonna roll them well without the nut on it you're gonna roll them and look for wobble and make sure they're not bent and uh if they're if they're bent they're garbage and um, I wire brushed it really good. And then I, how do I get this nice and shiny and clean? The product that I found that works the best with the least amount of effort is Flitz. So just FYI. And, um, and then I put some um, chassis paint on the exposed part. Um, just lock it in. Um, steering rack. I wire brushed the heck out of it, cleaned it up, examined it. No teeth are broken. Everything looks like good. And then I made it look shiny by using my flits. And it looks nice. Um, the rack is painted, chassis paint. Um, you'll notice the part with the threads. I left no paint here because I don't want to mess up 
the shimming process, okay? So that's no paint. And then this one here gets the circlip and that I did paint a little bit on the inside. Um, all this is clean and examined. Nothing's broke or damaged on it. I'm gonna reuse all that. I'm gonna reuse, the shims are good. I'm gonna reuse everything here, got it all cleaned up. The locking plates for the rack is good. Um, universal joint, that's not broken and functioning well. This was pretty stiff. I cleaned it outside with degreaser, it freed it up quite a bit. And then I soaked the joints with um, CRC 336. This is what you use in your, this is what you spray the springs on your garage door with uh, twice a year, by the way. So keep a can of this in your garage, but I sprayed that on the joints and um, it's working, working really nice right now. And I decided, uh, let's see, here's this part, uh, nylon cups, shims, tab washer, spring. I decided to replace some of the smaller parts while I was in there. Um, so I got new nylon cups for the United Kingdom. So, uh, this is Roadster factory stuff because they had everything in stock. That's part number 1587322. Um, two of those. I got two new springs. Uh, 120953. I got two new tab washers. 120957. Um, I got to get new shims. The shims were the only thing that came out kind of messy looking. So I got uh, 002, 130031. I got eight of these. And then 130032, that's 0.10. I got four of those. I can tell you my driver's side, I got four thin and one thick. On the passenger side, I got two thin and two thick. That's the way it came from the factory. So we're gonna start with that. And um, I also got, where is it? Oh yeah. The mysterious little white nylon button, which is right in here. I noticed mine was worn. So I spent the dollar and got a new one from the Roadster factory too. That's Part number, what is that? Uh, 145108. And new nylon button. And I, wanna, and I did get new uh, rubber bushings. We'll talk about rubber versus poly versus hard a little bit later. But I did get, uh, these are the old ones. Or this is the, this is the new one. This is an old one. Uh, but you can see the how much tighter that circle is compared to that one. Um, but this came in my Roadster factory kit along with um, some new bellows and stuff for the front end suspension to replace the old the old ones here. And uh, anyways, that's that. Of course, these things are cleaned and painted and clear coated. And um, that's about it. Everyone argues about the grease, oil, grease, oil, grease, this grease, chassis grease, corn, corn grease, this and that. The manual say use recommended lubricants and no one knows what to do. Well, this is your handbook. It's in your glove box. Go to the back. Turn around. Where is it? Oh, sorry, I did have it out. I've oh, here. Page 66. Steering rack. NLGI2. Stop arguing about it and just put that in. That's basically your wheel bearing grease. I decided to use not my black wheel bearing grease. Um, I, I spent $15 on this. This is Redline Synthetic Oil CV-2. Synthetic High Performance Extreme Pressure Grease with Red Molly. I wanted, uh, I wanted red grease for the rack. Look, NLGI grade number two. You can get this in a tub too, but for 14 ounces, it's five bucks more. But anyways, got that instead. So uh, that everything's gonna be greased up with that. Well, note that there's, um, so I'm reusing every part that I can use, but inside of this piece here is an O-ring and you should replace that O-ring. Um, this is the original. It was actually still in good shape. 
but I found one um, in my little O-ring nitro kit that um, was a perfect size, and so I put a new O-ring in there. The other parts, you know, I just uh, wire brushed and cleaned with brake cleaner and stuff and got everything nice and cleaned up, stuff that I'm going to reuse. And um, she's going to let this dry up for one more night, and then I'm going to start putting her back together. These are the original nuts and washers that held the rack down. If these are in good shape and not damaged, um, you can reuse these. Um, they're basically unobtainium. Uh, but I do have new nuts and washers that I will be using, of course, for to hold the rack down. So that's what these are. So you want to make sure you have uh, that too. And that's what I recommend for buying for new stuff. If your rack's not bent up and in good shape, um, you should be good. Let's start putting this thing together. I've got this thing um, in a vise, protected by a towel. Um, this end up, um, remember this bushing down here has to be pressed out. So I just left it in there and cleaned around it. So you're gonna brake clean and do a final air blow. And at this point, it's important to be very, very clean. Um, first thing I'm gonna put in is what the last thing I took out would be this washer. And you see how it's tapered on one end? So the tapered end goes up. Um, but first we're gonna grease up. Hey, this is some uh, sticky grease. I'm just using an old uh, painter's brush and uh, stuck it in as far as I could. And uh, same thing down here, did everything in there. Now I'll coat this washer and slide that down there. So you can see that washer right there and the tapered end is on the top part. So that, uh, that's been dropped in there. That's sitting on top of the bushing. So it's good to go. Next, we're gonna grease up and slide this uh, rack in. Why oh, is that messy? There's, it's all, it's all coated now. Of course, I cleaned it real good with brake cleaner and everything, it's, uh, it's good to go. Now this is going to slide in from uh, this end in. So uh, this is the factory manual. This is the Heen. The Heen's manual has got a good description about how to adjust the shims right here um, after you put it back together. For some reason, there is an error in here. It says to put everything back together, but it leaves out item 39, which is which is this. You, you, you need this to put it back together. But it is forgotten. <laughs> in, the, in the reassembly directions so anyways but next we're gonna we're gonna put this we're gonna put this stuff together and i'm gonna reuse my my existing shims that came with the vehicle and um see how it feels with it installed all right so this is all <clears throat> greased up get that in there looks good now we're gonna work on greasing up these things and getting them installed too. I am going to, I may shift this around a little bit later on, but I'm gonna get full assembly done later on. I'll explain that later. Here's the thrust washer. It's gonna drop down. Down in there. toothpick and that's flat on both sides so it doesn't matter which way it goes in I believe this one the groove goes down as I recall so this is going in I will tell you this is a snug fit so I am having to tap it in with a rubber mallet just to just to get it to, to seat down there it goes all set next is the original shims Looks like I got a thin one and a thick one. I just wire brushed them, cleaned them up, put a little grease on them, call it quits. Yeah, a little grease too. Let's go. Get a little toothpick out. There we go. This is called a retainer. Make sure you have a new O-ring inside of there. This is held in place by that little that little cog that we gotta find. So that's going to plop in right about there. That's an airtight fit. Probably because of the uh, little, bit of, little bit of paint I put in there. Looks good though. Going is this little cog. So you got to line up 
line up the, the holes there and get it get it in there. And, uh, that may take two hands, but we'll get it. Make sure you don't lose. Make sure you don't lose it. And the last thing to go in is your circlip. A little circuit pliers here, and you just squeeze it in, and then you're going to push around and make sure it, you know, it's it gets into that slot. That, that that's all that's all around it, so I still need to do that, but it's it's basically in place. Okay. Everything's seated in now, then you can take a rag and you can clean up all the grease around here. And, uh, functioning rack here. That's the next step. Now we're gonna grease up this stuff, which is your rack and pinion backlash. Um I've got I think there's six, six shims underneath the cap. Um, five are thick and one is thin. I'm gonna put the thin one in the middle um, and uh, put a little bit of grease on all this stuff and um, install it. You know, obviously the curved part is gonna go down like this um, over the curved portion of the rack. And a spring is gonna keep this thing in tension. That. I'm gonna grease up the spring there. Put a thin layer of grease on these just so that you know they stay in place. There we go. And the spring is the spring is installed. Push it on there like that. I don't know if there's a torque for this or not, but you're gonna, you're just gonna tighten it so it's it's snug. You don't want to. You don't want to damage those shims. Get a wide wrench. These things. Okay, so we're gonna put this to the side and we're gonna work on the tie rod ends next. All right. So this is the uh, nut. So for the inner ball joints, this this is the, the nut and I've got secured in a vise. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a dry fit first. Um, so you're going to slide this in here and then you're gonna pop this in here helps if you bump it up a little bit and it'll go right down and then you got to put your locking washer on and you're going to secure it and then this movement back and forth not sure how to calculate it but that is the number of shims that you need so you gotta cut that out. And basically when you got it right, um, you know, this thing will support itself. It will be moving freely in all directions and it will support itself its own weight. And uh, so I'm gonna put back in what I had originally on this left side, which for me was too thick and too thin. And I'm gonna put the thin ones in the middle I'm going to see how it goes. All right. So we put it back together. Make sure that cup is all the way down. It gets a little stuck on time. I did put a little bit of grease on my shims to, to hold them in place. And then put your lock washer back on. And uh, I'm going to screw it back on. And that went on perfectly this time. Thank you for the grease. There we go. To me, it feels a little tight. It probably should be a little tight, but I may take one of those out. Let's see how it goes. All right, change gears a little bit. It is much easier to do if this is dangling down with its weight. Um, get it started by hand with it vertically, and then you can always stick it back in the vise if you wanted to. a little 
pretty good I, I removed one of the thin shims but you can play around with it as much as you want but uh, it's looking, feeling pretty good right there here I took out one of the thick shims and you can see it's too loose this is a trial and error process and things are affected by how tight you make this nut but I'm gonna go with one thick and two thin so for me it's gonna be one less thin one for, um, for the passenger side that seems to be giving me a pretty smooth rotation here and it's staying up um, by itself. Once you're comfortable with your shim pack, you're going to assemble this together with some grease. Um, goes in there, then this. This is nylon so it really doesn't need grease per se. Got your lock washers. Uh, you'll notice that this thing um, has a hole in it so the spring is actually installed um, right before you install it back on to uh, the rack install this you start you you grease this up and put that in there and then you and then you screw the, the lock nut and this and this lock nut on Nice and smooth, no wiggle in there. Looks good. And once you got the uh, shims to where you like it. Um, the next thing you do is you use is you lock it in right now you've got three tabs and uh, you're gonna knock two in one direction and one in the other direction and um, I'll probably do I will probably do one in this direction here probably lock the other two in the opposite direction towards the inner side of the car. sides next step uh, first thing I do is I put this medium clamp on um, so I don't have to take it apart later um, make it a little bit easier and then you put your two lock washers on like that and then you're going to I forget this little spring you're gonna shove that spring into that grease filled hole and you're gonna screw this on until it's tight and then lock it on with that with a couple of wrenches. This is just going to be tightened on until it's snug. When you're comfortable with it, you're going to lock it down like this. Take it to make sure this moves freely. Two wrenches, and you're gonna lock it 
tight. Okay, so I will tell you, I had to play around with this quite a bit. Playing, putting that spring in, taking the spring out, maybe taking some grease out. Because at the end of the day, you want this thing to bottom out. So you're gonna make sure this is as far, pretty loose all the way back. You want this thing to bottom out um, this first nut onto the rack. And then once it's bottom out, just stop. You don't need to go any further. And then you're gonna put a wrench on it and tighten it up. And it's you're gonna make you're gonna want to make this really tight, as tight, tight as you can make it. And when you get done, this should still move smoothly. So if this is locking up on you and you haven't bottomed out, something isn't seating right. So just keep playing with it until you can get this thing bottom out and it still moves um, freely. Okay. It took several trial and errors, but I just got this thing bottomed out. I can hear it stop. You're not gonna make this tight because you're gonna you don't want to break anything inside of here. You're just gonna get it tight and then use the lock nut to secure it. Um, just a matter of taking that spring out. Maybe it's too much grease, you know, lighten up the grease a little bit. What helped a lot was putting the spring in first inside the rack and then screwing this thing on. That seemed to line it up a little bit better, but it probably took five or six tries before I was able to bottom it out. And this wasn't st uh, stiff and locked and it's nice and smooth. Like right. it should be. So a couple of tests you should be doing at this stage. Um, ignore the blue tape for right now, but Put a pair of ice grips on very lightly so you don't damage the splines and move just move the rack around back and forth many many times just get that grease to spread around it should move smoothly and consistently from stop to stop if it binds up or it feels funk funny you've got you've got a shimming issue another good test is later on when you're going down the road when you take a turn the steering should self-correct and recenter itself after you get done taking the turn, go down the road. If it doesn't do that, again, you're too tight. You got something going on. But mine feels really, really smooth. Um, the other thing to do is you can check for a wobbleness in here. I will tell you there's a little tiny bit of wobble in here. I think that's normal. Um, I think that's what that nylon bushing right there helps with. Um, this side, that's gonna be controlled by this damper here and mine's tight. There's no wobble, there's nothing nothing going on. Um, that's good. So let's talk about centering the rack. Everybody panics about centering the rack. How in the world do I do that? Well, if the bellows are off, you can use the rack itself. Um, here's tip number one. Don't use this side because it bottoms out underneath this flange. You can only test it here. So what you do is you take it all the way out till it's, it bottoms out here goes clunk and you measure the distance from there to here and for me it's it's gonna be it's gonna be six six and an eighth so half the distance back is going to be the rack is centered so I'm gonna go three and sixteenths Do, 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 do. Almost there. A little bit more. Three, three and a sixteenth. So now my rack is is centered. Okay. Let's say your bellows are on. Um, what's the other way you do it? Well. Take a look at this blue tape that I stuck on here. Put some around the perimeter, put one along the top. I'm going to move this rack all the way to one end. And once it's all the way out and stopped, you're gonna mark it here and here. You're gonna mark it. And then I'm gonna stick it, my wrench, so it's right in the middle here. There. So now this, these jaws are kind of in line and you're gonna count how many times it goes around till it stops again. So one, right? Two, three, And then you're going to mark 
take your marker and you're gonna mark it again right here based off of the line on the spline, okay? So the distance to the rack is three and a little over a quarter. So we're gonna go back one and a half and then half the distance between these two lines. So let's go, let's go one, and then half is gonna be the opposite. Right there. And then that half of that distance is gonna be right about there. It's a little hard to, to figure out. It, okay, so that should be half. And I put, oh, look at that. I'm three and a sixteenth. I'm dead on. <laughs> So if the bellows are on, you gotta use this method. If the bellows are off, you can use this method. It's as simple as that. Um, now you gotta mark it and locate it and be able to figure it out later. All right, so the next step is gonna be putting the bellows back on. Um, I'm sure the centering is gonna get out of whack during that process. Um, so what I've done for right now, so I can get in the, back in the ballpark, is uh, I measured um, from the inside of this to here, 12 inches, tightly wrapped some blue, some, some blue tape. And then I took my um, marking paint and I kind of marked a straight line right here. So if I figure I get this 12 inches from there, I can tap it so everything's lined up and I'm back to center because once uh, the bellows are on, it gets, you know, it gets a little bit more harder to see stuff. Next thing you're gonna do is you got two bellows. Obviously, you want the bigger end is gonna go in here, much more challenging. And you got the one with the medium end that's gonna go on this end here. Uh, first thing you do is you're gonna take your grease, you're gonna squish this down, and take that brush and put as much grease in there as you can, grease it up, and then you're gonna put lots of grease on everything here, especially the ball joint, and then you're gonna start the process of uh, getting this thing on. All right. So. Grease all up, and then I uh, use my heat gun. I warmed up the end here for a minute and uh, put my gloves on because it's stinking hot. And then the first thing I do is I get it with a nut. The best, the best way to get it with a nut is to just force it in on itself like that. Went on. I gotta get it out. Yeah, easier said than done, right? There she is. All right, now it's out. Um, done. That's how easy it is. All right, got the clamps on. I just let the bellow sit on here naturally where it would sit in the centered position. And uh, that ended up being, just I temporarily put the old one on, but uh, it's about three inches away from the nut. Um, I had a hard time getting this one to seat on the rubber. The trick was I put a temporary tie strap here to, to hold these together. That way it would grab onto the rubber at the bottom and now i'm just gonna cut that strap away but it's it's nice and tight and and it should work work fine get that out of there It'll take me a little bit to get that out of there, but uh, I had to loosen it up a little bit. But the point is, I was able to get the rubber clamped on the both sides of the clamp, which is what I was trying to accomplish. I kept wanting to slide onto the, onto the steel. Well, the side is all buttoned up and secured. And uh, this one is all greased up. And this is moving smoothly. All that's greased up. Now it's just a matter of um, this one on. get over that tape. 
tricky part is how to get how to get this over here. So I'm gonna play around and see how. how it works. Try not to do the soda can trick because I know I'll slice my fingers up. I think, so I warmed this up so it's a little bit more malleable. I think if I get it started on the bottom, there, okay. See, it's almost done, it's on the bottom. Now I just need, I hate to use a, I'm gonna use my little ice pick here, but need to coax it up a little bit. I know I can get this. I know this is really boring because I don't like to edit my videos and they're mostly real time and all that BS. All right, so it's mostly on. It's almost on right now. Just needs to get over to hump a little bit. Ta-da, all done. This big one uses a wire, not a plastic tie. I got enough to wrap it around twice, even though the original didn't do that, but that's all right. But, uh, I'm gonna get this thing tied up as soon as we can get it. Remember, we're just holding back grease with a very high melting point, not oil. I was trying to get this to be completely sealed. Doesn't need to be airtight or anything like that. Close to it. Okay, anyways, when you get all done, you're just going to fold it flat and then just bend it, bend it forward like this. Get out of the way. So, what have I done? I readjusted these bellows distances so that it wasn't so far apart. Um, so these are ending up around two and a half inches from the threads. I uh, put about an inch, inch and a quarter, about an inch on this one here. That's where it was originally. This one is tied over to flange. That's where it was originally. Um, and then um, this one about two and a half inches, let's say. Uh, the other thing I did was I uh, recentered it, which is coming very easy. I pulled it to the 12 inches and to here, lined it up perfectly with my white paint, and I've removed it to expose the thread because I'm gonna put the tie rods on. Um, and I chained up a new piece of tape and labeled it from 10 inches from here to here, just to get me in the ballpark. And then the paint is the final is is the final alignment. I took my non-chlorinated brake cleaner and I cleaned all of this. I cleaned this and I cleaned all of this. I'm going to put my clear coat protector on all the brackets on this cap and on this bracket. And, um, and then that'll get ready for the tie rods then. So all the bare metal has been clear coated. Um, except for the splines, left that alone. And I put some rubber conditioner on the boots, so we're good to go. Next, we're gonna put our tie rods in, which I bought new ones. Um, when you remove these, you count how many turns um, to take off to try and get your alignment about back to where it was. For me, it was 20.75 on the passenger side, and it was 20 on the driver's side. So pretty close to about the same. Um, so you're going to very carefully turn that the same number of turns and put these back on. And then you're going to use this to lock it in place. Last thing I did was I got my, got my grease gun out. And, um, these, when I took these rubbers off, they seem kind of dry inside. So anyways, I, I pumped a few pumps into, into the tie rod ends. And then the other thing I did is I found a... There we go. I found a grease nipple thing and uh, unscrewed that and screwed that in there. You want to make sure this housing is filled every inch with grease. So what I did was I pushed it to one side, the rack. I put two pumps in. I pushed the rack to the middle, put two pumps in, and I pushed it to the other side, and I put two pumps in. 
And now you're just gonna just move the rack back and forth and just spread it on out and um, you should be good to go. Uh, fun fact that these air bellows are so tight now that the air comes out that little hole where that the nylon button goes. That's where the air is, that's where the air is getting out from the rack because everything's so tight now. But everything's uh, working really good right now. And um, basically, time to clean up and this, this thing's ready to be reinstalled. Just test fitting the mounts with the rubbers. Are you okay? This, this flange goes under the flat spot of the rack. I think I can reinstall it with this installed, but I got but without these installed, the U-bolts. Um, I took the rack out with it with this installed on here. Um, I decided since this is to reverse this to since it's a universal, so I don't mean flipping it upside down. I mean I flipped it around. I put in the exact same orientation that came out, but I'm using the opposite side. So this used to be on the pinion side, and this used to be on the steering column side. Um, so this is reversed now. You want to slide this on so that it's rough as close as this flat spot to this flat spot. Just get the on there the best you can with the the best spline choice that you that you can make. And um, then I put another corresponding dot on here to help line up, keep it lined up later. Now, when I removed this rack from the car, I had left this bolted on, so I'm gonna put it, try and put it back in the way I found it. So I went ahead and secured this bolt down. This torque is about 15 to 20 foot pounds. And, um, and remember, you will need to remove this bolt in order to get the spline on um, inside the car. Um, now it's ready to Let's go back. Let's talk about these bushings for just a second. So you got three choices. You got rubber, you got poly, and you got solid aluminum mount. Rubber is what came with the car, but they don't make rubber like they used to. Um, then you got poly, and then you got solid aluminum mount. I am going to try the rubber, um, cause that's what came with the car. And um, that's gonna give a, a little bit less harshness to ride. The key is compression to see if I can't figure out a way to get these compressed properly. So once it's in the car, this gap right here, needs to be compressed to an eighth of an inch and then the bolts tightened so that's the that's the tricky process poly don't buy poly no poly it's not designed for this poly needs to be lubricated um, and it's too hard to compress um, so if you don't want to use the rubber skip the poly and jump right to solid aluminum mounts i'm not going to do that right now i may in the future um, but um, any little hit on this rack is going to transmit 100% directly to the frame and the mounting brackets and to the steering wheel. Um, and I'm not racing this car, so I'm gonna try the rubber first, if I can figure out a way to compress Reminder, it. Reminder, don't forget to put the little plastic plug back in there.